Okay, everybody, um, welcome to this ECSE. Can I just check? I assume people can hear me okay? Great, thank you. Okay, so my name is Lorna Smith and um, I'm a member of the Archer team. One of my main roles is around coordinating the ECSE programme, where E stands for Embedded. Embedded Computational Science and Engineering. And what I'm going to do today is talk a little about the program and the benefits associated with it. Um, we have Claire uh, moderating the session. So if you have any questions during the session, you can obviously chat to me, you know, actually speak, voice, or uh, you could type it in the text box and one of us will pick it up. OK, so moving on to my first slide. First of all, for those of you who aren't aware of what the ECSE programme is, um, we've had funding through the main um, Archer grant, the grant for the Archer service. We've had funding to for the computational, the UK computational science community to carry out software development. Now we've had a series of calls here and um, it's run for a period of six years and on average we had three calls a year. So the ECSE has been a significant source of funding in terms of software development effort and it's been a significant therefore a significant amount of funding to research software engineers um, across the UK. All higher education institutes are available are able to apply for for the money and one of the things that's become very clear is it's been really important to try and demonstrate the benefits of the programme to the different funding bodies um, and indeed to provide the funding bodies with the ammunition to secure future funding. Um, so, for example, EPS have used uh, some of this data um, in their, you know, in their bid to secure further Archer funding. So I'm just going to give you a bit of a summary of how the money has been spent. So the goal of the service is to deliver a funding programme. We were looking to deliver it and make sure it was fair, transparent, objective and consistent. Um, and the aims of the programme were firstly to enhance the quality and quantity and range that are produced on the Archer service. So by improving the software, we're able to increase the volume of science and the quality of the science. It was also about um, enhancing and sustaining the software that we have in the UK. So making sure that the software that's used on the system um, is of the highest quality. And also, uh, it was very important, the people were very important here. here. So we had a, and we were looking to ensure that we developed the computational science skills base. And one of the things here that was important was that this was about providing expertise that's embedded within research communities. So uh, a key goal was ensuring the effort was spread around the UK rather than just being kept in a small number of uh, centres. So bulk of the, the effort and the money has been spent, but the Archer service was extended for another year and associated with this was some you know, funding for the ECSE. So our final call is underway um, and we're in the final stages of that. All the proposals are with the panel members at the moment for review. And to give you a feel um, of the active projects or the projects that were funded, 88% of them are now complete. Okay, in terms of benefits, so while we still got active projects, measuring the benefits is obviously an ongoing activity, but we have a number of benefits um, and metrics associated with these benefits. So we have a series of metrics associated with demonstrating that we have had a high quality, fair and objective selection process. We have metrics associated with science productivity. And one of the main things we look at here is for the projects where it's relevant to the projects. So where the projects are, for example, carrying out performance optimization, we've looked to utilize these figures 
to gain an understanding of the financial saving involved. And of course, that financial saving or that re that saving in terms of CPU time is being reinvested in um, other science. We obviously are looking as well at how this work has provided more novel science and a better range of science on the system. And looking at um, who's benefited in terms of skills, where the people are located, for example. So first of all, um, I'll not spend a lot of time on this, but we were looking to make sure that the process was fair and objective. And so we tried to be consistent, first of all, by having regular calls that were published on the web, published well in advance. And we also had a group of independent panel members. So they come from, they are experts in the field from across the UK. Uh, the, this wasn't for profit. There was a not for profit uh, thing. So we had a minimum requirement. We had a number of um, what we call project months but that we had to, that we had to fund, but we actually, because we were reinvesting all the money uh, in the program, we were actually able to fund more projects than we were required to do. So we funded an additional 40 odd project months um, through this call, through, through this program. We used an FEC costing model, that's full, which is a standard model across universities. And what we found here was that this made it um, easy for organizations to understand, people's research offices understood it, and made it potentially opened up the system, the program to a wider group of people. So this graph here just shows you the number of institutions involved at any one time throughout the history. So it's done on six month on a six monthly basis. And say if you pick, say, January to June 2015, you can see here that during that period, um, there was between 25 and 30 institutions that were actively working on ECSE projects. So there's been a very large number of, uh, a good number of institutions involved in the programme. So how have we looked at trying to measure the benefit of science productivity um, and also the science and the novelty of the science and the range of science in the system? It's probably useful to go back and talk about where the ECSE sits in, in the science timeline, as it were. So, you know, it's very early on because we have the software and the ECSE programme works on the software. It enhances the software in some way, either through performance improvement or making the software more robust or additional functionality, for example. But at the end of the project, we're only just beginning to look at how at the science that can be done using the software. So the software is then used on the system, see on the Archer system, um, to carry out science, to, to, do, to do new science. We then have the actual science output and what's been produced. And from that science, you get your impact. But the, the reason for mentioning this is if you're trying to demonstrate the impact from the ECSE project, you know, you might not see scientific output or impact generation for many, many years after the end of the project. Another uh, challenge we've had, of course, not every ECSE is the same. Um, that's a good thing. We're obviously trying to demonstrate the benefit across the whole programme. Um, but it, it's proved important to make sure we understand what each ECSE is trying to achieve and look to ensure that we maximise the benefit from each and every one. So the comment here is really one size doesn't fit all. Uh, one project may be a very heavily used code that makes a very small performance improvement, and that could have a significant impact on a large number of users. Another may be a, a new code to the Archer system, new science on the system that's added a new functionality, and we're able to do something we've never been able to do before on the system. So it very much depends on the ECSE as to what the actual benefit is. Okay, so using that timeline again, at the end of our ECSE project, one of the things we can do is we can look directly at the computational achievements and we can look to publicize them and uh, demonstrate them. 
so we can look at ensuring that the, the codes are published and um, that they're available to people that you know if, if they have uh, reports or technical documents or publications we also have a good feel as to what the future science benefit will be um, one of the things that we do when people submit a proposal is, is we do ask them to explain who's going to benefit from this work. So while we haven't yet realised that benefit, we can still articulate what that benefit is going to be. And we have a number of um, scientific highlights on the website. And again, we can also look at the skills of the people involved in these CSEs. How is their skills enhanced through this project? We then move on to, to the codes actually being used on the Archer system for scientific investigation. So people are using this code, you're potentially increasing the size of the user community because you're able to do new things that you couldn't do before, or to achieve some kind of performance optimization, yeah, there may be enhanced science productivity, i.e. you're able to do the same science on a reduced CPU budget. Then we have the science output. So again, this is around the sort of achievements that you get from the science. So the traditional mechanisms such as publications and recording these is important. And then eventually any impact generated from this, which is usually demonstrated through case study. So as I mentioned, uh, one of the things we can do is we can talk about the future science benefits of the projects. And if you go to the Archer website, you'll see that for every completed project, we put up um, a summary of what they've done and how this is important for their science. Yeah. These are just six uh, pictures I took randomly from the list, but there's one there for every one of the projects that's finished. In terms of developing the computational science skills space, a key output from the ECSE programme is to do with people. We were looking to enhance the skills base across the UK, and we we're looking to provide assistance, expert assistance and high quality RSE work that was embedded within the research communities. So we're, we're trying to move away from it all being focused in a very small number of places and um, to ensuring that the people be working located close to um, the research groups. And so one of the things we can do is track the location of PIs, institutions, co-Is, and also technical members of staff to see, see where the effort is going. And as you can see from this graph, well not this graph, this map of the UK, um, this shows you all the different places that have this is the places where different technical members of staff are based. So as you can see, it is fairly well spread around. Um, we unfortunately haven't had anyone in Wales yet, um, but other than that, it is quite well spread. The darker colours represent, represent a greater amount of effort. Um, but uh, it's, it's pretty good and we're, we're pleased that a large number of institutions have been involved. So I mentioned increased scientific productivity before. This relates to projects that have involved some kind of performance optimization. And what we've done is we've utilized the performance improvement that people have reported. And we've looked at their CPU utilization on the Archer system. And based on that, we've been able to work out a saving in CPU time and therefore in financial return in financial terms. Now this has been very important and um, it's a figure that's uh, key to demonstrating how successful the ECSE program has been and that the key to trying to secure future funding for the ECSE program. It obviously isn't appropriate for all projects but for those that do involve some kind of performance optimization it's a very good way of demonstrating benefit. So as you can see, um, again, this is done on six monthly basis, on a six monthly basis. And um, at the, the last period, January to June, 
we estimated um, a benefit of just over 21 million. Now the whole program costs six million. So again, we're showing you know at least a three times return on investment. This will of course continue to increase as um, the service continues to be used and more projects complete. Increasing the range of science is also interest of interest. So the pie chart shows you the different scientific disciplines that have benefited from the ECSE program. And these are pretty reflect these really reflect the sort of science that goes on on the Archer service. Um, but it is reassuring to know that um, it hasn't all been focused in one or two particular areas. So as you can see, a large amount of the funding has gone into the engineering side of things. And then you've got the physical sciences and the chemical sciences um, taking up quite a large chunk as well. You've got your ocean sciences in there as well. But one of the things we introduced quite um, at the fourth ECSE call was something called new communities. And this, in this we were looking to encourage applications from people who, from areas where, which haven't really used Archer before. So scientific areas that haven't used Archer. Um, and I think we've been pretty successful here. We've had 10 of these proposals funded, which represents 11% of all the projects. But if you look at it um, based on the, from the fourth ECSE call forward, um, it represents about 18% of the projects. So um, we think this has been pretty successful. This is another way of looking at how uh, the science on Archer has benefited from the ECSE program. So what we do is um, every month we record what are called the top 40 codes. So these are the most heavily used codes on the Archer service, the top 40. And um, in the last six month period, um, over 40% of the top 40 codes benefited from ECSE support in some way. So that gives you an idea as to how much of an influence this is having on the day to day running on Archer. OK, so that was a relatively quick run through how we've been measuring the benefits of Archer. Um, we are at that stage where a number of the projects are finished and people are utilising the system. But it's still early days in terms of people producing publications and um, impact. But what we can see is the ECSD programme has funded RSEs in a broad range of scientific areas and at many different institutions. Measuring financial benefits is tricky, it's controversial, but in this case it's made the case for investment in RSE support. It's really helped to make this case um, to make this case for future funding. While some projects are still running, it's clear that we, we have been running a fair and consistent programme. We funded a wide variety of projects. Those projects and the people working on them are based around the UK in different locations. And that we have generated considerable finan financial benefits. Um, so far, we're seeing a return on invest investment of about three times. But we expect this to keep increasing. We expect to see um, these sort of figures increase as we come closer to the end of the service. And also, as, as time goes on, we'll be seeing more, more and more scientific publications uh, coming to the fore. OK, so I think that's. Does anybody have any questions? Mike Payne here. Thanks for that. Um, I just wondered if there is any sort of um, or how you might hope to track benefits over the longer term. I know it's always very difficult to um, keep track of uh, you know things many years on, but I just wondered what plans you had to uh, sort of you know show that wider impact as um, it goes beyond just saving a computational time, but the impact of uh, 
enhance capability? Yeah, I mean, it's a very difficult one. Um, I mean, one of the things I think we need to stop doing is thinking about this in terms of the Archer service and previously the Hector service. Um, you know, we need to be tracking the impacts of HPC services across the board because we almost certainly are seeing the benefits of the Hector service you know, coming to the fore now. Um, so in terms of some of these, some of the data I've been presenting here, it's very specific to an active art service. But I know EPSARC are looking very closely at trying to uh, do a better job of, of monitoring and measuring publications, for example, and uh, references, references and acknowledgements to uh, previous services. Well, I think in an ideal world, it'd be much more closely linked to uh, research fish as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, it's a, it's just a really difficult issue. Um, but actually, it's it's quite nice that you can actually show that you had a benefit without worrying about all those later things, which is what most research has to rely on to claim that it's a good value for money. So that's that's pretty impressive, I think, already. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? No. Okay. Well, um, obviously, if anybody would like to ask me anything afterwards, um, please do just get in touch. If you can't find my email address, just contact the help desk, and they'll they'll forward it on. Um, but thank you all for for listening. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye.